Hi, I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is Data Demystified. What I'll do today is walk you through this visualization of how COVID-19 or any infection can spread as a function of the R0 number or the reproduction number. There are two tabs at the bottom of this Google Sheets. The first one is simple versus compound interest, and I explain that in a different video, which I'll link to below. And the current one is COVID-19 spread simulation, and that's what I'll talk about right now. There's really two main inputs here. The first is the R0 number. We can set that to whatever we want between zero and any large number. And the starting number of infections, which we can just say is 10. If you want to start with one person, that's fine as well. Everything else plays out down here, which is the number of periods that have passed. And I, for this example, simulated only 30 periods, but the idea would go on for beyond that, of course. What you see here is the current number of infections in that first period, how many new people there are, which is a function of that R0 number, and then the total cases in that moment, those new infections haven't happened yet, they're just about to happen. So they're not present in that first case. What's really much more important is this graph right here, and there's two things to understand about this graph. The blue rectangles, the vertical ones, represent the total number of new infections on any given day, given the starting number of infections and the R0 number. And the axis that we care about is the one on the right here, the new infections. What we also want to consider are the total number of cases, which looks like it's the same thing, but what's worth noting is that this uses the left axis over here. And what you can see is that those values are much larger because the total number of cases aggregates how many new infections happen in each period. And what you can see is as you change this R0 number, let's make it, let's say, 1.4. So what you're looking at now is nearly 250,000 daily new infections and a total of about 600,000 current infections. What's also worth noting is that if we have an R0 number of exactly 1, well now the new infections are the same every single day and the total infections grow, but they don't grow exponentially anymore. Now they just grow in a nice line, in a linear fashion. And finally, what's worth noting is that if we have an R0 number that's less than one, let's pick 0.8, the disease dies out. You see that the new number of infections goes down every single period until it reaches nothing. And the total number of cases does grow, but it decreases how fast it grows with time and eventually plateaus at some point, in this case, 50 cases. So depending on what this R0 number is and the starting number of infections, you can see how that will unfold over this relatively short period of time. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next video.